Have you ever been involved in a bad deal? I have. You know, one time I bought this thing, cost a little bit more than $1,000 on eBay, and the thing was fake. <laughs> Good thing for eBay protections. You know, I was able to return the thing, and they returned my money. But you know, many people are involved in a bad deal every morning. Every, uh, many households start their day with a cup of coffee, and they don't realize they're getting a bad deal. Caffeine, a cousin of cocaine, nicotine, and other ins, actually is not the best thing for your body. Some people say, my doctor, I need this stuff. If not, I don't function. Well, there was a very interesting study that was done from Bristol University showing that caffeine only makes you alert to a normal levels. In other words, if you're a regular caffeine user, you're messing up with the chemistry of your brain, and you need the caffeine just to feel normal. The people that don't use caffeine actually are normal all the time. <laughs> Talking about a bad deal, isn't it? <laughs> Common sources of caffeine include coffee, tea, soft drinks, chocolate, and some pain relievers. This study from uh, ABC News this lady took a functional MRI to detect how much blood flow was in her brain and then took one cup of coffee and repeated the study. This is the brain before the caffeine. Notice the redness all over the brain. This is the brain after the coffee. 40% decrease of blood flow to the brain. No wonder this is true. Drink coffee, do stupid things faster with more energy. <laughs> no blood flow, bad decisions. Look at this study. They had this spider. They injected this poor spider, showing the normal spider web, and injected the equivalent to two cups of coffee, the amount of caffeine, of course, you know, according to the size of the spider. This is the spider web it made. After 48 hours, it did this. <laughs> it took 96 hours to get this toxic substance from the body. This is my study. And in this study, we were documenting how people that drink coffee on a regular basis have problems with their conscience, are more likely to pick up other addictions, have problems with their sleep, become irregular, it lets fruits and vegetables, and actually their nourishment is affected secondary to that. This is another one of my studies. In this study, we were documenting how people that drink coffee are more likely to have something that is called inflammation, which increases your risk of cancer and many other problems. And the list goes on and on and on and on of the health effects of caffeine. You can go, for example, this uh, website, Healthline, just a, a mainline uh, educational health uh, website showing how it increases confusion, it increases risk of depression, it increases anxiety, irritability, cancer, stomach problems, diarrheas, muscle aches, uh, infertility, blood pressure programs, and I could continue with the list on and on and on and on. You're getting a bad deal. <laughs> so what are we going to do if, if we want to have that victory over caffeine? Well, you know, it's funny because I never seen somebody addicted to broccoli. <laughs> See, because broccoli is not addictive. Yet caffeine, if you take it on a regular basis and you stop it, how are you going to feel? See, it's going to start affecting your nervous system. So eat a good breakfast with lots of whole grains, drink plenty of water, deep breathing, aerobic exercise, and some hydrotherapy. Hot water followed by cold water. I'm telling you, I guarantee it's going to wake you up and give you that energy that you need.